YouTube. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, the Ram bar with the on the TRX with the putting uh, some KC lights on it. I mean, it's it's uh, real super easy to do. Um, it's already done, so I'll just kind of kind of show like what I did. So, and I, I'm going to mention a little bit about a block heater because. Uh, some people say you don't need it for gas engines, but, you know, I put one on my power wagon and, you know, it uh, when it got super cold out, I didn't mind plugging it in. In the morning, you get heat within, like, you know, two minutes. It start, you know, you feel heat already and the engine would start up. It wouldn't be racing super high because it wouldn't have to because the engine was already warm enough. So, I'll show you that real quick because I kind of ended up throwing it in there while I was doing the lights because I already bought the block heater and I was like on the power wagon you had to remove the starter in order to install it and then I was under there running the wire for the lights and I noticed hey there's the hole right there and the starter's on the other side on this truck so I said it looks like I'll be able to push it right in and uh, it did so I didn't have to remove anything I basically just pushed it in there and put uh, one bolt on and then the wiring harness that comes with the um, block heater so anyway the ram bar with the lights so the ram bar comes with holes already in it on uh, each side so uh, plenty big enough one there and then one on on the other side I didn't really want to drill any more holes because uh, I just didn't want anything to rust and you know you would think with this thing as much as they charge for them that they would come with the mounts for the lights but they don't so these little brackets here you have to get these there these are aluminum they come with a little rubber um, piece that wraps around the bar before you clamp those on but I mean they weren't it weren't like they were like real expensive it just would have been nice if they, like they came inside the truck or something anyway so you got this tube here comes down so the wires are they're all tied together in in parallel and the, so they're all tied up here and then i just have uh, I have one, I would say it's like more like a cable, so it's got two wires in it, all right? It comes down to here. Now, you can't just, you cannot just use a fish tape. It's not going to work because there is a plate that mounts this to the bed on the inside. And there is a there is a, enough room for the wire to go through, but you're never going to get it to come through there. I mean, it's just not going to happen. So... You have to take this off. It's not that long. It literally took me maybe 10 minutes. I don't know. I think five minutes to unbolt this thing and move it back. Not counting. I had to take off the uh, the bed cover. So, I mean, that that the bed cover took like five minutes too. Because it's really just a couple um, clamps. Four clamps on each side. The rails come off. This and four bolts up front here. That remove the cover but if you don't have cover it doesn't matter so the wires come down through here and then there's the square holes in the bed here so it goes where I have it the wire coming through the bottom of this tube into the square hole and then there is a factory hole right here that's got a plug in it but I took the plug out and then the cable comes through here then I just got it running running down through here and then once I went underneath it's uh there are um existing wiring harness that's on the frame rail up kind of high um I just zip tied it to it and then just ran it the rest of the way to the front and you could just follow that wiring harness all the way up till you get to the front wheel well and then uh and then uh I have it coming up here there's the cable right here and it runs down there you know under the booster it's 
complete ladder way of anything like the exhaust or anything like that. <clears throat> and then comes up here to this is the aux wiring harness comes factory and this goes to your aux switches um under the hood or i'm not sorry on your instrument panel or your whatever under the radio so there's your aux stuff there now i don't know what i did with it i had a picture of it here it is so this sticker comes on the wire loom and it has the colors that coincide with what aux switch that goes to. So that's all you need to do. I went with pink and dark blue, which is aux switch one, which is the easiest one to go to. And then if you want, you can set it to a momentary switch or just uh, on off switch. The default is on off, but like say you wanted to hook up a winch and you wanted the in and the out. So you say you wanted the out to be aux two and the in to be aux three. You could set it to momentary, and then when you, if you have it hooked up to your winch controller under under the hood or wherever, you could actually have the buttons right there instead of having to have a controller in the truck but that's basically it i think the uh i want to say it that circuit i hooked it up to is good for like um i don't know i think 50 amps or something so i mean those lights are um they're leds so i think they only use six amps total for all four like maybe seven tops but so I'm not really worried about that at all. But so that's that with the lights. It really was, there's nothing to it. I mean, I, there's nothing really else to say other than if you have the Ram bar, you have to take it off to run it. You're not going to, you just, it's not going to happen. You're going to fish it through there. I mean, you possibly, you don't have to go through that hole. I showed you, you could go through the bottom of the bed, but I figured why run all the way over there. So what we can talk about now is the uh the block heater so here we are underneath the truck okay i haven't gotten this on my lift yet i don't know if i want to but so i was running the wire here uh you can't even see it but anyway and i happen to look up over here and you, there's the block heater right there so uh you can kind of see it there is like a, there's a Allen or a torque socket that holds a little bracket. But right there where it's at, there's just a, a hollow well. There's no coolant, no nothing. I'm trying to get a good light on it where you can just see it. And, uh, anyway, there. But anyway, you can uh, just push it right up in there. It went right up in there past the exhaust. No problem. It's just like a, a look. The holes there, probably four inch deep hole, and this that cylinder is three to four inches long, and you just slide it right up in there, straight up, <laughs> and then it comes with a wiring harness. As you can see, that little orange that's like a high temp wire. There, I've had it on. At first, I wasn't sure, but I have it on there for a while, and it's it looks exactly the same as the day I put it on. So, and I have it going kind of back to that right there. That's the first clip. That way it holds it back away from the heat. And then I got it uh, right there. You see it running right behind the big bundle there. And then it goes up to the top above by the, uh, kind of like by the valve cover. All right, back up top. So you, that same wire that you saw down there, I got, it's, it's kind of hard to see. It's coming up this way. I, and it got, has a bunch of these things on it. I, where it's supposed to go, route it, I don't know, but this was the best, easiest way for me. And I got extra left. So I just have it all right here, you know, just, I'm just going to store it here for now because it's like summer just started. So I'm not really worried about it. When uh, winter hits, I will 
put it towards the front where it's sticking out of the grill or or wherever wherever I think it's a good place for it but I know that these trucks along with my power wagon they are like um they suck gas on a cold start like when they're cold and you start driving it you can watch the the gas the gas meter and everything just it drops i mean it, cold starts just eats gas on these things so i have to tell you that i ran a block heater anytime it was below 30 probably and for sure if it was for sure at 20 but typically if it was 30 degrees or below i plugged it in and i noticed the truck would start it would almost be like a regular idle i mean it would barely be up at all so it definitely was making a difference for um how it ran when it first started on a cold start so and then like i said then you get heat too right I wouldn't say instantly because it's not, I don't know, it doesn't really heat the coolant, like it's not in the coolant jacket, but it, whatever it is, it's effective because it does heat the engine, so, you know, I mean, it was manufactured and made for the truck, so it does work, so I think it was about, it was under $100 for it with the plug, the cord that comes with it, so won't be trying that out though obviously until probably november december but i wasn't even going to put it in yet but i was under there and i saw how easy it was and i didn't have to take anything off i mean it took longer for me to get the setup to go get the socket and find out what torque spit it was and and get a socket onto it than it did to actually put it in i mean i slid it up in there obviously it's just a hole and you're putting a circle into a a round hole so that was nothing but yeah the uh it was so easy to do i didn't want to i just said forget it because that's that's all i had left to do to the thing so with my little list of things so uh coming up will be probably a, a pulley for the crank um and a rear sway bar I think then after that, there's really nothing else to do. And then the pulley thing I just do because it's something easy too that just slides over the existing balancer. So, and that should be something simple. But uh, that's all I got for today. So, until next time, we'll talk to you later.